Hey my Sky Savers, welcome back to my channel or welcome. I'm Kim and this is World of Sky, a world for women and moms looking to save money and get the most bang for your buck. And today we're talking about how to make living on one income work for you and your family. Sometimes going from two incomes down to one income is a choice and people have time to plan for it and sometimes it's forced due to loss of work or illness. Either way, whatever the reason, here are some things that you can do to make it work for you and your family without having to sacrifice everything. Before we jump into the video, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel if you have not done so already. Trust me, your purse, your wallet, your bank account will thank you. Okay, let's get into these tips on how we can save money on a one income. So first up, let's talk about some things that you can do to cut costs in one of our biggest expense areas, which is food. We all gotta eat, right? And you want to be able to feed your family healthy and nutritious food. One of the biggest ways to keep your grocery bill in check is to meal plan. I know people are like, oh, meal planning. I don't want a meal plan. Well, I don't like to meal plan either, honestly, but Meal planning does allow you to streamline, let's just call it the eating process, right? So you know exactly what you and your family are going to eat for the week. You know exactly what you need to purchase when you go to the grocery store. Knowing this information will help you avoid impulse purchases that can throw your budget out of whack. You'll also want to plan your meals that are in your meal plan around the sales at the grocery store as well as in-season produce. So check out the grocery ad for whatever store or stores that you like to shop at in your area. See what's on sale. You're going to plan all of your meals around the items that are on sale at your store for that week. This is going to be so, so, so much cheaper for you. Also purchasing produce that is in season can save you tons as well. You ever try to buy some produce out of season? It's high, it's high. So if you are looking to cut your grocery bill, you should only be buying in season produce. Also, before you head to the store, when you're making your list, take an inventory of what you already have in your fridge, in your pantry. See what you already have so that you're not repurchasing those same things. I myself am guilty of doing that, thinking that I didn't have something because I didn't take my inventory before I left. And then I end up with multiple of those items. Also, you can check your fridge and pantry for things that will be expiring soon and create a meal around those things so that they don't expire and go bad and you're wasting your money. Once you've done that, make a list and stick to your list. Stick to your list, stick to your list, stick to your list. That is hard, it can be hard, but if you stick to your list, you can keep your budget in check. If you have trouble sticking to your budget or you like to make a lot of impulse buys when you're in the grocery store, simply do curbside pickup. You can order everything online and then just pick it up. That is going to prevent you from picking up things that you did not intend to grab. If you're looking for more information about how to save money at the grocery store, check out this video where I talk about grocery store traps and things that they're doing to make you spend more money. You need to be aware of these things so that you're not falling into their trap. The second thing is to coupon. Coupon for your household items. You can coupon for groceries as well. However, the, the coupons are just better for your household items. So there are essential things that every single household needs, whether you have one income or you have two incomes. You need these things to run your household. Things like toilet paper, laundry detergent, toothpaste, deodorant. Well, you get it. Those essential things that you need for your house and for your body. Those things. Using coupons can help you save at least 50%. Yes, I said at least 50% on those items. I find that I save more on the side of 75% to 90% off of those type of items when I coupon. Think of what else you could be using that money for. You could use that money to pay other bills, to save, to plan for retirement, invest, whatever it is that you need to do with that one income. Make that income stretch further, I mean a lot further, with couponing. But the secret is, which is not really a secret, is that you have to know how to do it correctly. I offer a free course for beginner couponers so that you can learn some of the basics and the fundamentals of couponing. So I will leave that link in the description box below if you're interested in learning how to do this. You need to learn how to do this if you only have one income. Well, you need to learn how to do this if you have two incomes. I just don't believe that you should pay a full price for these type of items when you can get them for, like I said, anywhere from 50 to 90% off. Don't do it. 
The third thing that you can do to save money is to declutter your home. Decluttering can do a few things for you in regards to your income. The first thing is that you'll be able to find things that you misplaced, which means in turn, you do not have to repurchase those items that you already have. Also, if there's anything of value when you're decluttering clothes, shoes, jewelry, antique pieces, unique items, anything of value that you're no longer using, what you can do is then just sell those items. You can make quite a bit of money. You can sell them on eBay, Craigslist, or my personal favorite, you can sell them on Facebook Marketplace. Specifically, if you have children's clothing, you can sell them in a lot. People are looking to buy that stuff. So again, this is a way that you can actually generate some more income into your household by selling the valuable things that you are no longer using. Comment down below and let me know if you've ever sold anything online and if you've had success with that. The next tip that I have is to save on energy costs in your home, right? Utilities can skyrocket if we're not conscious and paying attention to the things that we're doing, how much energy we're using, how much water we're using. But this tip specifically is revolving around energy usage. And that is to unplug the things that you are not using. Did you know that these items are still drawing energy even though you are not using them just because they are plugged in? Yes. It's still costing you money to just plug in your stuff when you're not using it. So what a waste of money, right? So you want to unplug your coffee maker, your blender, your phone, if it's fully charged, go ahead and unplug those things, take them completely out of the socket so you are not drawing energy and having more energy cost when you are not using those items. Now, I know that that can be a little bit annoying, right? To have to unplug all these things, like who has time for that? Your other option is to just get a smart power strip. What this does is you can plug all of your things into the smart power strip and once things are fully charged or if they're not in use, then the power strip will control that for you. So no matter which route you take, whether you get the power strip or you just unplug the things yourself, do one of the two, okay? Do one of the two so that you are reducing your energy costs. Also, there are other things that you can do to save hundreds or thousands of dollars on your energy bill as well. These things are so important, so I did an entire video on how to save money on your energy bill. I will leave the link for that video in the description box below. Check it out. Check it out. It's a good video. It has a lot of information that is actually actionable items that you can take to save money. The fifth thing is how to save on clothing. Kids clothing is so expensive and it's like the kids grow like weeds and they always need new clothes. <sighs> so these are a few things that you can do to save some money on clothes. Try buying your kids clothing secondhand or getting gently used clothes from family or friends. Oftentimes people want to get that stuff off of their hands, they want to get it out of their house and they would be glad to give you these clothes. And then that really benefits you because you don't have to buy any clothes or at least not as many as you would have if they would not have blessed you with those items. If secondhand is not your thing, try buying your kids clothing at the end of each season when those items go on clearance for up to like 75% off. Of course you'll need to size up if you're looking to buy those items for them for the next year, but you can really snag some great deals at the end of the season clearance sales. And as an adult, you need clothes too, right? The good thing is that our stuff fits for a lot longer than the children's clothing. But if you need a wardrobe refresh, try doing a clothing swap with your friends and your family. Everyone brings things that they're no longer wearing, but they're still in good condition, and then you swap with one another. It's so simple, it's so fun, and it's very inexpensive. And then you have you some new to you stuff. The sixth thing is to find free things to do in your area. There are actually a lot of free things to do in different towns and cities if you take the time to look for them. Concerts, movies in the park, hiking trails, events at the libraries for the kids. The list can go on and on and on, especially for different holiday specific events check out things that are going on in your community that are free but fun for you and your family. Do some research on that town or that city's website and then go and have a blast for the low low. <laughs> the last tip that I have for you today is to plan your errands so that you can save gas. So if you can avoid it, you don't want to be running errands every single day. That's going to cost you more gas. And try to lump those errands together based on their proximity to one another. So if you have two errands over in this town and you have four errands to run over in this city, do the same errands in the same area on the same day. Make sense? There are a lot of sayings in there. 
but pretty much you just want to lump everything together so that you're not driving here there and everywhere trying to run your errands and you're wasting gas and costing yourself money in the process okay so those are the seven tips that i have to help you save some money when you are on one income i hope that you found this video helpful if you did please be sure to give the video a thumbs up make sure that you are subscribed to my channel i do post new videos every single week and they're pertaining to saving you money in some fashion that is it for now thank you so much for watching i appreciate you and i'll see you in my next video happy saving